What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering and some interesting new news around Spider-Man 2. Well, it's just a perfect example of corporate hypocrisy and virtue signaling. The game itself seems to be extremely being extremely well received. I think that's overall a good thing. I think that, you know, more good video games is a good thing for people who enjoy video games. Shockingly, right? Sure, it's fun to dunk on the ones that end up as a complete disaster, the ones that are broken at launch. The whole drama around Cyberpunk was a great for the content cycle. But ultimately, I think it's certainly better that people have more games to play and they have more things to enjoy. Well, Spider-Man 2, I think, curiously, uh, this franchise, Insomniac Games, have gone out of their way to make it extremely... Whoop, wrong one. Inclusive. I think that was also wrong. <laughs> but anyway, um, the idea that, uh, you know, they, they have to have pride flags everywhere. They have to have, you know, all these, you know, LGBTQ, LMNOP storylines side by side is an important thing to the game developer. But as always, they have no strength of their convictions whatsoever. They don't care about supporting the gay community when it costs them potentially any money. They have no interest whatsoever in it. It's confirmed Spider-Man 2 Middle East version has removed the LGBT dialogues, side missions, and all gender spectrum flags. Shout out, can Americans get the Middle Eastern version? Is that for sale over here? The reason this is interesting is one, because it, it points out the hilarious hypocrisy of this woke capitalism that exists in every major facet of entertainment and escapism. But it also shows um, just how pathetic um, and and um, and uh, wimp wimpy these companies are because they will take they will they will remove all this stuff just to sell another 5,000 copies of their game. But by telling people, yeah, we stand in solidarity. It's the same thing as when BMW has the pride flag in all of their Twitter accounts, except for in the UAE, for example, it says, uh, uh, are you going to insult me too, or accept the corporation? See your identity as pure money to the gay people who defend me just for showing the truth. Thank you. And you see the official statement. Marvel's Spider-Man two was classified after the publishing studio approved the modifications required by the general authority. The game is suitable for ages 16 and above. You see people in the comments, honestly, as someone who is gay, I miss when society wasn't so focused on us. It's just the idea that you can't complain about being to about tokenization or bad interpretation without being called a bigot. We are struggling in the same direction. Maybe they should focus more on uh, what, this com what these companies are doing to you every single time. Then, of course, most people say, where can I buy this version? Same concept, showing Mercedes Benz with all the pride stuff, except for in the Middle East. How do I get the Middle East version based? I mean, their propaganda is only, it's only brave if you face some sort of actual consequence. It's like people that, that like say it's stunning and brave to come out as gay in 2023. It's practically a marketing technique. There are entire marketing campaigns built about it. Look at Jojo Siwa, all these other people that turn it into a profit center, right? Gay baiting is a thing too, right? Spider-Man 2 could be getting banned or delayed in some countries. You see this PlayStation 5 gamers in the Middle East say that Marvel Spider-Man 2 pre-orders haven't opened in the region, prompting concerns that the game could be delayed, censored, or even banned. Pre-orders for Spider-Man 2 opened in mid-June across most of the world, yet in Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, and Kuwait, pre-orders are reported as not having been started. In some cases, Spider-Man 2's October 20th release date isn't even listed. Middle Eastern countries, including Saudi Arabia and others, have rules and regulations that have led to many different games being censored or banned within the region. For example, the recent release Final Fantasy XVI remains banned in Saudi Arabia. No official reason has been provided, but it's believed to be uh, because of a gay couple kissing in the game. Square Enix is said to have refused to censor Final Fantasy XVI's content so that it could be published in Saudi Arabia. Fine, based, right? Square Enix sure loves to censor, by the way. This they won't censor, but they'll definitely make sure they make Tifa's chest smaller so that fat, ugly feminists don't get so upset, right? They, so the fat, greasy feminists 
uh, don't complain about Tifa having, you know, her chest being too big. They'll do that. But at least say this, at least they stand by it, right? You don't get any credit. You don't get any credit for publishing it in one way where it's widely, widely accepted, okay? You don't get any free likes and retweets. A post from Twitter account MSM Access has prompted speculation about the state of Spider-Man 2's release in the Middle East. The account claims that Spider-Man 2's release is being delayed in the Middle East because of the content of around LGBTQ+. Representation is being censored to accommodate regional laws. The veracity of these claims have not been verified. Well, we knew this would be a thing forever. Why is this interesting? Well, because in America, okay, if you were to mod out those flags, not only are you called all sorts of terrible things, but you are banned. The number one site for, you know, uh, modding, for adding mods for games, you know, games like, um, you know, many games uh, have been saved by modders, for example. And there are game companies that actually embrace the modding community. And then there are others that don't. But for the most part, modders are better at fixing the game than the companies themselves but this thing, you know, Spider-Man Remastered Modder banned for simply letting players remove the pride flag. So in America, you have to consume it. You take that pride flag or you get banned. You cannot play the game without ingesting the propaganda, even if it goes against your religious rights. Even if you're a Muslim here in America, you have to deal with that. You have to get it. You have to get that pride flag. You got to look at it. You got to play all the LGBTQ side quests. You got to you got to kiss the dude. You got to do all this stuff. You got to have help a, a, a gay kid with his prom proposal, all this kind of stuff. You have to do it in America. It's propaganda and you're going to take it. But in a country where they will actually say, well, we're not going to allow this. These companies are happy to remove it uh, because money. On August 15th, an uploader, uh, someone uploaded a Spider-Man remaster modification to Nexus mods that replaces Newton's prism artifacts with the stars and stripes. Its description said, but the mod surreptitiously named New Newtonian New York wasn't the work of a rogue Isaac Newton hater crusading through the time to challenge physics glass prism experiment. It was just the same modern homophobia, and it replaced pride flags throughout Spider-Man's New York with a U.S. flag, a bold move for someone with a username, uh, as mentioned before. Management and Nexus mods quickly removed the unpleasant mod and banned its creator mincing no words in its accompanying blog post. The fact that the user needed to make a sock puppet like a coward to upload a mod showed their intent to troll. No, it's actually because weirdo, psychopaths, woke losers like you would probably try to ruin their life. That's, that's, the, that's the truth of it. Psychopath, woke losers will try to ruin your life. Look, I don't care. I'm unaffected by the pride flag garbage in video games because... I don't buy them if they have that stuff. It's immersion breaking. It's the same when like games have these weird cringe Trump surrogates in them or even like a Hillary Clinton surrogate. I don't want IRL invading my escapism. I don't think that that's a bigoted point of view. I don't think that modern gender politics are something that I look for in a video game. Now look, hey, Wokies, make all the games you want. Have all the, you know, uh, you can have, you know, your full on dude on dude action video games. I don't care. I'm not saying none of this stuff should exist. I'm saying I don't partake in it. I don't want it. That doesn't make me phobic. That makes me a discerning consumer. You know, the LGBTQ community can buy all the, all the hot LGBTQ action video games they want. And hopefully there's enough to support that market. But it's my job to point out the hypocrisy that in the Middle East, you know, if you're in America or in the West and you want to remove these things, not only can you not, but you will be banned and labeled all sorts of things. If you're in the Middle East, the company will do it for you. Okay. Insomniac Games will happily do it for you if that's what you want. You know, it's like, I, I don't even, I mean, I don't know how else I can, you know, star, even look at the Starfield game, Pro, Starfield's pronoun removal mod has been banned by Nexus Mods. This is the biggest like modding website out there. I assume, I hope, that this you know gives rise to a more free speech orientated mod website that would allow these type of things. But it's it's wild to me 
that you know people can't see how hilarious uh how hilariously double standard this is how much of a hilarious does it hurt the gameplay for most people nah you know are some people gonna not buy it over it probably but it seems like overall the game is good and you know ultimately in any major western media whether it's movies or video games or television at this point they're going to have um the message so just know that when you go in and buy it even you know japanese studios studios like square enix stuff like that they have their own version of the message and um it's very similar to the west's so you know if you want to support any of these AAA video game publishers just know that you're going to get it in there you can either see it and move on and enjoy the game for what it is and that's totally fine or if you're like me you know you can acknowledge that it's immersion breaking and the game had better be even better for me to bother with that you know i don't remember a lot of overt pandering in a game like red dead redemption maybe it did exist but uh you know i think that to me it just shows just how cowardly these woke video game companies and all these other people truly are. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it. We'll talk to you again real soon.